Good, good to see you here. Um, tell us a little bit, please, uh, about the Reinvent Your Future Tour. Well, first of all, we're on the 16-city tour with University of Phoenix and Career Builder around the country. And uh, this is, I think we have about four more to go. This is number, this is our yeah, fifth, four more to go. And so it's been a pleasure just talking about trying to get people back to work and having employers who can hire people. And we've had up to 30 and 40 different companies and they've been able to, you know, help people find jobs. And so it's it's really great because, you know, we've asked them to make sure that they have at least five or six jobs or even more, you know, to fill. So they're looking to try to make sure that they can fill those jobs. And it's not something we're just having people show up and do a career fair. Excellent. Uh, if you would, tell us a little bit about your platform. What are you, what are you sharing with people these days? Well, what I do in my part of the tour is I, I teach people how to find out who they are. I teach them how to build an identity, and uh, which is critical when you want to reinvent your future. So reinvention is a really, really important thing in the, in the 21st century. Jobs are being outsourced. Um, people are not sure of their, uh, you know, sustainable income. Uh, they're being challenged by, um, again, the changing technology in the, in the, in the workforce and uh, they have to redevelop new skills. Um, jobs are being outsourced. It's more competitive today because you're in a global environment. So it's a little bit more difficult today than it was uh, traditionally because people, they'd have one job and they stayed on one job, you know, Detroit. You know, you worked in, in the automobile industry and you stayed in the industry all your life and you made good money and then you pass it on to your family and they worked in that industry and pretty much the whole state was built around that whole automobile industry and now automobile industry uh, has to, you know, the, 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 the business itself, the business climate of Michigan has to be diversified now because of the lack of jobs in, the, in that industry. So it's the same thing all around the world. That's, a, that's an example of what's happening around the world. People have to redefine themselves, which, you know, makes Reinventing Your Future the title, a great title. And so what are you finding then with the University of Phoenix as they have adult learners? Um, is there a common thread that you're noticing in, in terms of the audiences? Well, first of all, when I'm speaking to University of Phoenix uh, um, folks, you know, their alumni and their students, uh, they're highly intelligent. I mean, I'm so impressed by the fact that they are, um, they got a couple of jobs, they're going to school, they got families. They're, they're an adult uh, educator and so, or, or adult learner. And so they're trying to get as much as they can, they're trying to balance so much. So it really takes a special kind of a person to be able to do that. And they talk about getting their master's degrees and some talk about getting their doctor's degrees and they talk about understanding and learning organizational management and business management and talking about wanting to be, a, wanting to be an entrepreneur. That's the American dream. Absolutely. I, I love that I hold the idea of entrepreneurship and, and talking to people about their brand. What are the takeaways that you expect them to have when they leave the workshop or the presentation by Stedman Graham? When they walk out, I understand you've got nine steps and uh, identity and a couple of other things going on. What, what's the takeaway for them? Well, the, the takeaway for them is to understand that they have to, there's a process to be competitive that they have to get beyond just a degree. That there's more to life than just going to work, doing the same thing over and over every single day. And they have to rethink uh, their lives all of the, all of the time. I, may, I make sure they understand that everybody has 24 hours. And so you're either gonna be a consumer or you're gonna be a producer in the 24 hours that you have. In order to be a performer, a high level performer who's competitive in the 21st century today, you have to use your brain. And you have to learn how to take information and education and make it relevant to your skill building. And you have to be able to apply that to your passion and to your and to develop a lifestyle. Because a student today and a person coming out of school today wants to do what they want to do. They don't want to be a, a handicapped by a society that tells them, you know what, I'm finished with you. Go out, we're, you know, we just downsized or we eliminated all these jobs and I'm sorry we eliminated your job. 
And so you need to take more control over your destiny, and that's what we're getting people to do, is think about how to take their skills, their passion, what they love, and turn that into a profession. Turn that into a career path. What do you see then as the future in terms of entrepreneurship? People are looking at that next thing and, and, and don't know how to get from you know, taking stock of their inventory and deciding on that vision that they want to accomplish. Uh, are there some trends that you're seeing in terms of entrepreneurship? Well, the trends I'm seeing, number one, is uh, you have a mass commodity out here based on retail. You know, what, what's that mean? That means the jobs are being um, uh, commoditized. It means that um, that wages are going down. It means that people have less control over their life. It means that you have 800 channels and everything is niched. So you have to be a specialist in the industry today. You have to be able to uh, bring um, a great talent base to the marketplace. You have to be create value. It's no more just having a degree. It's no more just finishing school or showing up at the job as a body. So you really have to rethink what is it that you do and fit that skill base and fit that talent into what the employer wants. They're looking for specific skills and talents. Do you fit that slot? If you don't fit that slot, then, then is your job going to be obsolete? Um, you know, how do you, how do you take charge of your own life? Entrepreneurship and business, to me, is more important today than any other time in, in, his, in the history of this country. It may be harder because the, um, the big companies are now taking over everything and franchising everything, and now you can find everything in the mall. You know, it's hard to compete. When, when prices are so low that you know, even if you went into business, you wouldn't make any money. So technology is a great place to start, and then that you can at least you know have access to the whole world. If you can find out something, you can find something you can sell, or develop a product that you can deliver over the internet. And energy is also a, a great opportunity to get into because we need new innovation and, and creativity based on based on that. Final question, as it relates to the steps that that you talk about mm -hmm. in your workshops, uh, what steps would you leave? What message would you want to leave with people who? Watching this. Well, I can go through the steps real quick. The first step is to find your passion, find out what you love to do. First step, check your ID. You got to have an identity. That's your foundation for development because most people are doing the same thing over and over every single day. The educational system teaches you how to memorize, take tests, repeat the information back, then you forget it. So you're not going anywhere unless you th begin to think and again make education relevant to who you are. Second step is to create a vision for yourself. Is that you have to have a vision beyond yourself. Your life's destination, where you're going to be in five years, 10 years, 15 years. Third step, develop a plan. What's your plan for execution? What can you develop and create? Fourth step, master the rules of the road, your value system, your guiding principles. Fifth step, step into the outer limits, overcoming your fears, your challenges. Sixth step is power decisions to change, not so much what happens to you, but how flexible you are you in this changing environment. Seventh step, build your dream team, gotta have a team, no one makes a loan, no man or woman is an all unto themselves. Eighth step, win by decision, life is about making the right choices. Last step, commit to your vision, which is be somebody. Fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Very powerful information. Thank you. I mean, I appreciate what you're doing and the work that you're doing and, uh, and the leadership you're providing because this is a leadership uh, um, marketplace today. You know, you know self-leadership is big. What are your habits? What's your, what's, your, what are your, what's your discipline? What are you going to do? What are you going to create? And the message is, if I had to add another message, is that you can be anything you want if you understand the process of how to get it done. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. My appreciate pleasure. You very Thank much. you. My okay.